Hey, everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Real Estate Agent Advantage. As always, my name is Lauren Cooper, and today I'm joined by the infamous Mr. Chasten Miles. What's up, brother? Hey, how you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man, I appreciate you doing this. So uh, the reason why uh, I wanted you to come on is because you've had a really unique traje trajectory to your career and you've kind of done things your own way. And I really want to get some insight uh, for myself, for everybody watching and listening to see how you've done it. Because the amazing thing about this business is, you know, because we, we we know a lot of different people, you know, within our community and, and outside of it. You can build your business doing just about anything, right? People yeah. cold call, people shout on the street corners, everything in between social media, it doesn't matter. Um, and you've sort of found your own path. So I'm really interested to dig into that a little bit. Uh, why don't we start out with just telling people, what were you doing before real estate and what got you into it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, I didn't come from a real estate background. Um, so nobody in my family was in real estate. Um, I didn't have any real estate exposure or anything like that. I mean, well, really the only exposure I had was people saying that you can make money with real estate and kind of those real estate TV shows that were coming about. Um, what I was doing before was actually, I, I was in sales, I guess you can say. So I was selling gym memberships for a while. And then I was selling cell phone plans and, and phones. Um, both of those were straight up commission based. And I had to learn how to sell, you know, I mean, if I wanted oh, yeah. to pay my bills. Yeah. Um, but the cool thing about those, however, is people would walk in the doors and that would be my opportunity. You know, I, I had a product there that I can sell them right on the spot. And, you know, it was it was it was easier when I think back to it seemed hard at the time, but it was a lot easier than what I do now. Um, yeah, people, like you said, people just walked in with the expectation exactly. of I'm coming here to buy something and you just needed to help them with that. Yep. Yep. So actually how I got into real estate, um, this goes back to when I was in college, uh, me and my roommates and a couple guys across the hall, you know, we were obviously doing all kinds of crazy stuff on campus that we weren't supposed to be doing. And it got to a point where we're like, hey, we need to get we need to get an off campus house. Like, just think about what we could do when we're off campus. So we were walking around one day and there was literally a sign posted that was advertising off campus rental houses, three to four bedrooms. And they had a phone number on there. It was like, perfect. This is exactly what we were just talking about and what we need. So I called that phone number and spoke to this nice lady. And she was like, yeah, you all just come to my office and um, we can talk about what we have available and everything. So we set an appointment, went to go meet her at her office. Turned out this was a real estate office. And so we're sitting there um, on this conference table and she's showing us properties on her laptop. And we're like, yeah, we like that one and that one. I mean, we liked all of them, whatever we can get really, you know? <laughs> um, and so we hopped in the car with her. She went and showed us these properties and we're like, yeah, we want this one. So we go back to the office and she's like, okay, this is such and such a month and just fill this out and, you know, we'll get your deposit and everything like that. You know, me and my buddies were already like, okay, you're going to pay this much because you want the master and you're going to pay this much. Um, so we were super excited about that. But then this all seemed to be happening too quick and too easy. So then I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, I know that you talked about how much it's going to cost us in rent and stuff, but how much do we have to pay you for doing all of this? And she said, you don't have to pay me anything. That's when I was like, oh, guys, y'all, this is a scam. We got to we got to go. Um, and so I started getting intrigued. I was like, wait, how does this all work? And 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 all of that kind of stuff. Um, and so that's when she started telling me about how this real estate agent thing worked. So as she's telling me this, like, oh, I get paid from the landlord and all this kind of stuff my head is just exploding. I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. We called you off of a sign. And then now we're here about to get this place and you're about to make such and such amount of money off of us. Heck, I can do this. Like I'm actually on the campus, you know, and I'm kind of popular because of these parties we've been, we've been doing. I could do this all day and night. I know a lot of people who want to move off campus. So at that point I was like, hey, how can I get started doing this? Well, 
her office was also a real estate school. So she brought in the actual owner of that whole real estate school, old guy, you know, kind of country guy. We're in the, we're in the, the suburbs of Atlanta. And he was telling me about joining real estate school, telling me how much it costs. I didn't have that kind of money, you know, because we're about to get this place and I was in college. Yeah. Um, so talked him into letting me start real estate school on a payment plan, right? And so I started on a payment plan. You're already selling before you get your license. You're selling yeah. him up. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. All right. So I get on this payment plan and when it was time for that second payment to come due, I didn't have the money for it. So I had to drop out of real estate school. And I told the guy, you know, at my last day um, that I was going to be back. I just need to save up some money. And I literally remember him sitting on this bench outside of the front door. And he was like, yeah, I hear that from a lot of people. You're not coming back. And that's always stuck with me. Well, it took me two years and a move to Texas before I got back in real estate school. But I got back in and I got my license. Um, mind you, still under the impression that real estate was just like you put up signs and people call you and that's how it works. But I got my license and I was ready to hit the ground running. That's how I got into real estate. All right. Now, what, what brought you to Texas in the first place? You know, man, I keep in mind, I was at that college age and um, me and the school thing didn't work out. So I ended up moving into the city. So I moved into Midtown Atlanta and I got consumed by that city. In Is that where you're that, from? That, I mean, I was born in Houston, but I oh, lived okay. out in out in Atlanta for like 10, 11 years. You gotcha. Know? So a long time. Um, but when I moved to downtown Atlanta, I mean, I was getting into all kinds of stuff out partying every night at the clubs every night, things like that. And, you know, I knew I wanted to do more and be more, but I was around all the wrong people. So I did something drastic. I said, hey, I'm going to up and move to New York or LA. And everyone who I told that to said, you got to have a lot of money to move in those places. And so they kind of crushed my dreams on that. So I said, okay, I'm going to move to Texas. I'm going to move to Dallas for a year and I'm going to sell a bunch of real estate. And then I'm going to move to New York or LA. So I packed up all my stuff and moved to Dallas. I didn't know anybody in Dallas. I didn't know anything about Dallas. Um, but I did it with this plan of making all this money over the course of a year in real estate. And so I moved here and hopped in. All right. So now I want to hear. So day one, you get, you go, I'm making money in real estate. I got to get my license. Obviously you get your license. Now what? You obviously have to interview with brokerages, figure that all out and then sort of hit the ball running. How did you start? Yeah. I mean, so I enrolled in real estate school online because um, it was a lot cheaper than going in person. And I was able to knock out those classes really quick. Um, as far as choosing a brokerage, I mean, I interviewed around. So literally getting on blogs, like looking up brokerages and, and what were the popular brokerages. So I interviewed at like four of them. Um, two of them I couldn't afford to join because <laughs> there, was, there was big fees involved and they had high monthly fees. One of them, um, you know, basically that was the most awkward interview ever because it, I mean, that guy, this was a luxury firm. That okay. guy was literally across from the table looking at me and basically said to me, yeah, I don't think that you're ready for this. So pr pr go get some experience and then you can come back. So okay. that was a no. And I went to Keller Williams. They accepted me and they didn't have high fees. And so I started there and, you know, thinking I'm about to hit the ground running and showed up to the office, you know, ready to sell a bunch of real estate and literally just felt like a, a fly on the wall, you know, <laughs> but yeah, so that's how it came out to me joining a brokerage. Um, over the course of my career, though, I didn't really know, well, starting out, I didn't know that I had options. I, oh, yeah. I didn't know the flexibility of this career. I didn't know anything besides 
sign on a light post and, <laughs> and that's how we make money. So there was a lot that I didn't know about real estate. And so my first year was not good at all. Um, I was in this new area. I didn't have a background. I didn't know anybody. I didn't even know the streets and it all happened so fast. So my first year, it wasn't good. I mean, I barely made any money. Me and too. So, and, yeah. You know, it's, it's interesting when you hear, you know, I, I get a chance to hear all these different people and their stories. Some of them, you know, they hit the ground running because they have a network that's built in or they're, or they have a family that's in it. That's great. Uh, other people, you know, they're very lucky and things just start to roll. For me, I busted my butt for a year and did three deals and only one was a, a sale. The other two were leases. It was brutal. So I had to find my way and figure it out. It sounds like you were similar. Yeah, I, I tell people, you know, I, I learned from the school of hard knocks when it comes to this business. I didn't I didn't have a lot of money starting out. Um, basically, I was starting with what I had saved up from working my jobs. Um, and, and if you think about it, I had to pay for moving, I had to pay for getting this license, joining the brokerage, like all of this money was coming out and none was coming in. Oh yeah. And, and it got to the point where my full on electricity was out for days because I couldn't pay the bills. Right. And, and so I couldn't afford to join coaching programs or, or anything like that, or pay people for their time. So a lot of the learning that I did was full on learning from experience. So when it comes to even lead generating, I was that person that would ask someone a question or read something somewhere, you know, okay, they said this, this works, I'm going to figure out how to do it. And I'm going to do it, you know, because I don't have anything else to go off of. Right. So it, you know, I know a lot of people are scared to, to cold call. My thing is like, okay, this guy told, told me that's what you have to do to make it in this business. So heck, what else do I have to, to lose? You know? And I was that guy. I full on did like 50 things, 50 different things to learn how to generate leads. And some of them worked, some of them didn't, but that's what got me going. And to this day, like, that's why I'm so um, versatile when it comes to how I can build this business and how I can teach others how to build it because I've tried so many different things and I tried them out of desperation. So oh, I yeah. feel like when you do things and you're desperate, you do them at a high level because you don't really have any other option. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, what, what was it that did start working for you? You said your first year you were trying, I mean, for me, same thing, cold calls, door knocking. Okay. Tell me what to do and I'll do it because I had, you know, a growing family at home. I had no other income. I needed to make it work. So it took me about three years to really on that third year, get it to hit. Um, what was it for you that started producing, you know, those first sales and, and developing the momentum that you needed? Yeah. So it was, hundred well I won't say 100 percent majority of it was cold calling um so I I would just hit the phones um it wasn't like I had past clients or a network of people I was 24 at the time my people were across the country and they weren't trying to buy nothing you know right. so it was cold calling I had to just reach out to random people though that got me my first few listings um, I would, I, I remember I would hop on Craigslist and see people who were trying to sell their homes themselves and start cold calling them. I would go to for sale by owner websites. Um, and I would call the people off of those websites and yeah, I would just use those generic scripts that were, you know, in those brokerage books and on the internet. And I would just call people, um, something else that for I, sale by owners. Yeah, for sale by owners, for gotcha. sale by owners. Um, I didn't really have a lot of luck starting out with expired. So I mostly um, went for for sale by owners. Yep. Another thing that I had to do was because I didn't know anybody, I didn't have anybody that could send me business or even knew of me in the real estate industry. I had to start creating a network around me. And so that's when I really dive deep on social media. Um, I saw, you know, I was a millennial. I was young. I wasn't scared of Facebook. I wasn't scared of Twitter or anything like that. Right. Um, and there weren't many people at the time using it for real estate. So 
I came out guns a blazing, you know, hey, I'm the local real estate agent, just blasting real estate everywhere. And over time, you know, people started reaching out to me from social media about helping them with real estate. Um, so I would do that as, as well. And, and then just doing that, like, boots on the ground network. And I wasn't a big door knocker. So I won't even sit up here and say that I did a bunch of door knocking. But what I would do since I didn't know anybody and I needed to build a network around me, I would go to a ton of events. Like um, I was out here meeting people left and right. And it was all events that I mean, I, I wasn't getting invited to them. It was like, it was like finding stuff that was being advertised and just showing up and finding those people in, in the room that looked like they were either the ones throwing the event or they were part of that inner circle. And I was literally that guy like, hi, my name is Chasten. You know, what do you do? And so that's helped me tremendously even to today because not only did it, did I become known for real estate here in my city, but that presented me with other opportunities over time as my knowledge grew and as my business grew and having those connections with those people, I was able to, you know, bridge it to do other things. So you, you're obviously very entrepreneurial in your mindset and, uh, and very ambitious to be able to go out and, and do that, right? So these networking events, were they mostly kind of the business community in the area and you were meeting business owners or it was just basically anything and everybody? Yeah, it was, it was kind of anything and, and, and yeah, it was kind of anything. I mean, I was going to fashion shows. I was going to car meetups. I was going to, um, of course, real estate events. So um, new development openings, business openings, things like that. Um, release parties. I mean, I was, I was going to, any and everything. Got you. The key was basically being in front of people, meeting them, creating those relationships, right? Yeah, absolutely. Right. Excellent. So, so take me then your, your, when do you think it sort of hit for you where it's like, okay, I've kind of got a handle on this and it's starting to grow. At what point? Yeah. So um, I would say that was probably around, uh, probably around year three and the way that it, that it, that it was growing because I was, still hitting the phones every day, cold calling. That's how I was getting my, my listings. I was also getting out doing open houses every single weekend. Um, and so I was expanding my buyer list. Um, as you start to get listings and get buyers and things like that, you know, you get those opportunities to start following up with, with people. Right. Um, it was probably around year three where from year one and a half to, to year three, I want to say I had closed probably 60 deals, which I didn't realize that was a good amount. You know, Absolutely. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't realize that I was, I was just going through the, through the motions. And I remember reading, you know, early on in the business that all these successful realtors were saying that their business was referrals, like, they were getting referrals. That's how they were maintaining and growing their business. They were getting referrals. And I had a moment with myself because I said, I was taking a look at my database because I was switching from one ancient one. I think I was using top producer and I was switching to um, something more recent lines desk or something. And, and I saw that all these people who I had worked with, none of them had sent me any referrals. And I was still doing this like grassroots stuff and I had helped all these people. And I noticed that I had a problem at that point. Um, the reason why they weren't sending me referrals were, was because I wasn't staying in touch with them. I had became that transaction-based realtor where it was just get them in and get them out right. onto, the, onto the next. And so I started really planning a lot of my activities around my past clients. So um, reaching out to the past clients regularly, sending gifts, sending keep in touch stuff, planning client appreciation events, um, things like that. And my business kind of took a, took a turn because I was still doing those lead generation activities, but now I was getting in business from other people. And I was continuing doing the social media stuff too. So now I have business coming in from, from there it was a huge snowball effect 
that happened quickly from those years three to five, my business really exploded because I had all of this business coming in from all these different places. And one thing about me was I stayed consistent. So I didn't stop doing that stuff. Um, I basically added on to it. Um, right. And then adding on like YouTube and, and, and people are talking about running ads now because, you know, we're progressing. So adding on ads. And so I have all of these sources of business coming in. And at that point, that's when I started growing a team and, you know, because I needed help. And yeah, it, it just keep growing, growing from, from there. All right. So let's dig into this a little bit. When you started contacting your database and, and realizing there's, you know, some gold in there that you're just not taking advantage of, what specifically were you doing? How are you keeping in touch? How many times did you create a plan to say like the 33 touch sort of system, or I'm sending newsletters, I'm making calls every quarter. What, what did it look like? Yeah, sure. So I'll just flat out say the, the, the first call that I did to everybody um, was basically an apology call. Like, you know, I had to apologize um, and I was apologizing for not keeping in touch. I didn't know how to, you know, I didn't know this part of the business. Like I wasn't a business person. I was running a business, but I didn't have a business background. Right. Um, so this is all stuff that I'm learning along the way. Um, so it started with that ap apology call. Then I implemented um, my past client calling day. So during my power hour, which I call it power hour, every day has a different thing. And so on Thursdays, that was my past client day. And I would literally just call past clients. I, I, I would use this simple script. So it's the Ford script where I'm asking them about their family, how their job is going, um, are they doing anything or have they done anything fun? And then what do they have planned for, you know, whatever holidays coming up? Yeah. And so so for, I, for those that don't know, it's, it's family, occupation, recreation, and uh, D, what is the D? Dreams. Dreams. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, hey, what are, what are, what are y'all planning or what y'all's dream for the, for the next upcoming holiday or whatever? Um, so I would, I would run through that simple script. And I broke up my, my database to where I was hitting, hitting them equally over the course of a month. So they would get that call one time a month and, and I'm just checking in. Um, something else that I would do was I would send a letter of the heart. So um, someone taught me this, that you know when, when you are working with clients um, for however long, a month, two months, you actually build a relationship with them. Right. And then right. when you stop working with them and you stop contacting them and stop calling them, it's kind of like you ghosted someone that you were dating. You know, it doesn't it doesn't really feel good. And so with this letter of the heart, this is a letter that I would send out once a month at the beginning of the month where it's just keeping them updated on what's going on with me. It wasn't so much business focused like, oh, I just closed this and that. But it's like. Hey, me and my family, we went on a cruise. It was my first time going on a cruise. It was so much fun. And so I would send that every month. And it's so crazy with that. Um, I forgot one month because I was busy. And when I was doing my calls, I actually had a couple of past clients say to me, hey, we didn't get your um, your letter. Did you send it out? And I was like, no, my bad. So, but, but like people really liked that. And, and I felt like that really um, humanized me more. Absolutely. Uh, because you know, a lot of us run with our headshot and our professional marketing video and not with us as a person. And so I would do that. Um, I would also send the evidence of, of success postcards. So sending out those just sold postcards to let the database know that I'm still active. Um, this is physical and then I, mail that you're sending out at this point? Yes. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I would send those out, letting them know that I was still active. And then um, I would also do client appreciation events. So I started out doing one, one a year in kind of around the Thanksgiving, Christmas time, um, client appreciation events, which these were phenomenal for referrals. So once I did my first one, I was addicted to them because I pulled um, like 60 something referrals from that one event. Um, and you, I could give- Was that just for clients or were you telling clients to invite somebody to it as well? Yeah, so it was just for past clients and they were able to bring people as, gotcha. as well. 
But that's not what got the referrals. Um, during my client appreciation events, we play this game where I have three gift cards. So, excuse me, three of those like Visa gift cards. Right. And I pass out sheets of paper that are lined, you know, they have lines on there for name and phone number. And the game is you have two minutes to write down as many people who you think may want to buy, sell, or lease a piece of real estate within the next 12 months. Okay. And so we, we start the clock and everybody like gets to writing and they're pulling out their phones and putting down names and phone numbers. And then at the end, we tell everybody to stand up and then we say, okay, sit down if you have um, less than two, I mean, two or less, and then sit down if you have five or less. And then, you know, so everybody keeps sitting down until like pretty much the top person is standing up or the top three people. Right. And those people, we give those gift cards, um, but we collect everybody's sheet of paper. And so although those winners may have had, you know, 10, 15 people on there, we still have everybody else's with like five and six and stuff. And then that next week, we just start hitting the phones. Hey, I got your name from such and such. Um, they let me know that you could possibly be interested in. So it's kind of like that warm, warm handoff phone call. So really that's how we pull referrals. Where did you get yeah. that idea from? I, I, I saw it done for something else. It was what type of event was I at? Um, I want to say I was at like, no, I had went with one of my um, aunts. She was selling Mary Kay and she played something like that to get other people who would be interested, other women who would be interested in exploring Mary Kay. And I remember seeing that years ago because she was selling Mary Kay back when I was in high school. So I would have to go with her to her parties to help set up and all this kind of stuff. So I remember seeing her do that. And so I tried it for my client appreciation event and it worked the exact same way. Wow. And so, yeah, I do it every time. Really? I love it. Yeah. So I would do the client appreciation parties and, you know, once we saw the success in this, we just kept that cycle going. So a spring party and then a winter one. Um, then, you know, this is just to keep those referrals coming in. Um, and yeah, people, people love it. I mean, I still have clients that reach out to me and it's so amazing because it's those things that I feel like really bonded us versus the actual home sale, you know, right. and that's why they continue to send us business. It's because of the letters and the events and, you know, the gifts. Oh, we also do monthly gifting. So monthly gifting, small what does gifts. What that look like? Yeah, so so each, each month, um, depending on like whatever holiday is in that month, we send them a gift and they're super small, little corny gifts, right. but we have like really like quirky sayings to them. So like the Brian Buffini kind of thing, like a bag of popcorn saying just popping by or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, we send those every month and yeah, people people like them and they're cute and funny and creative and they're super cheap. I mean, we order bulk products off of Amazon. Like we ordered this like big bulk chapstick thing and we send out like, don't let your friends and family get chapped by using the wrong realtor always remember to refer us like stuff like that and so right. um those are cute and yeah it's just a system now that stuck with me for years um and we still do it beautiful i love it so a lot of people will know you from from youtube and uh why don't we talk about that adventure so what got yeah. you started with kind of just laying everything out there on youtube what was the idea behind that so it didn't really start with an idea. It started with me using YouTube as a social media network. And so again, I'm a millennial and you know how casually people post on Facebook, like, oh, people aggravate me or y'all <laughs> guess what just happened. That's what I did, except I did it on YouTube. <laughs> um, and so it started with me out of frustration so one day I was in the office, I was making my cold call um, rounds and I wasn't getting any appointments. Um, and what was crazy was there was like four people who I had talked to that 
their biggest reason why they wouldn't want to meet with me was because the commission percentage, right? So they were all like, oh, no, I want a lower commission. Your commission's too high. So we're, you know, and I got so mad on that fourth person. I was just like, all right, whatever. Bye. And so I got in my car because I was like, I just need to go drive and just let some steam off. I got in my car and I don't know what came over me, but I literally pulled out my phone and started recording. And it was like me recording this public service announcement on how much money realtors make. And I was literally saying like, people don't understand that we have to pay taxes out of this and we have to pay gas. And I got to get all this stuff printed. Like I was just letting it all out there. Right. right. Um, as I was driving around and I just uploaded it to YouTube, you know, I just uploaded it. I was just like, somebody needs to say this because nobody's <laughs> saying this. And obviously the public is misinformed. And so I uploaded that to YouTube and I didn't think anything of it. I didn't do anything with it. I wasn't trying to become a YouTube star. And I went back to that video probably, you know, a few months later. And I saw on my YouTube channel, I had like 240 subscribers. And I was Just like, based wait. Off of that video or the few that yeah. you did? Yeah, I was like, wait, what is a subscriber? And why are y'all here? And then I look at that video and there's like comments of people asking questions, right? Like, you know, well, how much are taxes? And well, how much do you spend on this and that? So from there, I started recording and uploading videos, answering those questions that people were asking me. And the audience started growing. Um, I started getting more subscribers and more people were asking more questions. And next thing you know, and I won't say next thing, like it was just overnight, but over time, right. I had thousands of subscribers that were real estate agents. Um, and I had series of videos of me just talking about my, you know, stuff that I was experiencing. So still at this point, they were just car videos. They were literally just me in my car. I didn't have a set or anything like that. I was just answering questions from the car. And um, yeah, that grew, that grew an audience. And at that point, I think it was probably once I hit like a couple thousand subscribers, that's when I was like, okay, let me start researching into actual like YouTube being a creator, you know, YouTube is telling me, oh, you can monetize, you can make money. And then brands are starting to reach out. And I was like, whoa, 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 what is this? So at that point, I actually started researching and started doing things as a creator that people were teaching, like, okay, say this in your videos or have this format or create this intro. And I saw how the subscribers grew once I started implementing these things. And then I started trying other things and learning about the algorithm and stuff like that. Right. So today I know all of that stuff and I've actually tried it and I've worked it and I've seen it work, but my original plan was not like starting a YouTube business or a following, um, right. which I feel like helped me because a lot of people go into it, unfortunately, um, they're going into it more on the business side and trying to be perfect and trying to say the exact right things. Whereas if we think about creators, the reason why we love them is because they're real people. And I came into the gate being that real person instead of this business that most people are trying to lead with. Right. Yeah, absolutely. People connect with authenticity, right? Not some facade. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. All right. So uh, we, we spoke a little bit earlier about, you know, having a very entrepreneurial mindset. And I know you've kind of uh, gone in a few different directions uh, over your career. Um, you've started investing in real estate as well, right? Yeah. So yeah. let's talk about that a little bit. I mean, and, and, and you know what, maybe even before that, let's talk about growing your team, because that's a whole big issue for a lot of people. Um, they're worried about bringing on people, even an assistant, because that's a salary that you need to take care of. And then bring, you know, uh, buyer's agents, seller's agents, however you decide to grow the team. What was that process like for you? Yeah, so 
it, it starts in the mind with that really. Um, because yeah, I had those same fears, like paying a person, this and that. Um, but see, the thing is I was making money. Um, and so I had the money to pay them. I was just spending the money on my lifestyle, you know, as I was making it. But what really hit me in the head was when I realized that I'm losing money by not having this other person. Um, because as I'm making more money, obviously when we think business wise, our price per hour goes up, right? You may make 20, $30,000 that first year, but then by year six, seven, and you're making over 200,000 or, you know, you're making over six figures, your price per hour is a lot higher, right? And when you think about it, you're sitting there doing activities in your business that don't match your price per hour. You know, you're sitting there filing paperwork and uploading stuff into a database and, and checking voicemails, right? Those are roles and duties that people get paid $20 an hour for, or however much an hour, whereas your price per hour now is 70, 80 bucks an hour, over a hundred bucks an hour. Right. Right. So at that point, you are losing money. It is costing you. Right. And that's how I thought about it. And when I, when I framed it like that, like everything that I was doing, right, I could easily pay somebody $15 an hour to do this stuff. And I can continue making the $80 an hour. And you focus know, on those activities that make you the money rather than filing paperwork and all that other stuff. Exactly. Like, like it makes sense. I said to myself, it, it was literally like one of those Looney Tunes commercials where someone gets hit on top of the <laughs> head, bashed on top of the head. Like I said to myself, you know, this isn't worth my time anymore. Right. Like, right. and not, and not cocky. Like it physically didn't, didn't make sense, you know? And at that point I said, okay, I got to get somebody. And so how I, how I went about that, cause I didn't know where to find somebody or how to hire somebody. I started putting out posts on Facebook, like, yo, I need help. I need an assistant who y'all got and started getting recommendations. And that's where my first few assistants came from. Um, they started out part-time just doing a few little duties here and there. And then, um, I had my first assistant, they were actually physical, I'm physically there with me part-time, me and my office roommate or office mate, I guess you could say at the brokerage that I was at, we actually shared that assistant. So I had them part-time, he had them part-time. That's a great way to go for people that are watching that are maybe a little hesitant and not quite sure. Absolutely share one. Yep. Yep. So, and she was actually a real estate agent at the brokers that I was at, but she wasn't doing much in her business. So she had a lot of time, um, which worked out and we were able to, you know, give her some extra money. And then she ended up moving to Austin and had to leave us. And at that point, that's when I went virtual. So I got a full-time virtual assistant. Um, I was paying them pretty much the same that I was paying the person in the office, but I had them for five more hours a day. And um, so that virtual assistant, they were helping out with pretty much any and everything that I didn't need to physically be at. And right. they were great. You know, I mean, unfortunately, they didn't know the business. You know, they didn't know the actual ins and outs of the real estate business, but I didn't need them to. And I was that person like I was the actual agent. Um, so I, I switched over to virtual and then I also brought on a buyer's agent. So this person was helping with all of my buyers. That way I can focus exclusively on listings. And, um, you know, that was working out for a long time. And it got to a point where I felt like they weren't invested anymore. They were wanting to do other things. They were making the good money. <laughs> the agent, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they were making good, good money. And, um you know, they weren't trying to be real estate long-term. And so I completely squashed the whole team thing. And I was like, I'm just going to do this by myself. 
um, me and my virtual. Um, and that was working out for a long time. And then I switched brokerages. So I came over to eXp and that's when I really exploded with, or I'm not gonna say exploded. I started over with the traditional team. Gotcha. Um, in building a different way, you know, kind of off of what I learned the first time. And, and uh, so what does your team look like today? Yeah, so my team today consists of a transaction coordinator. So they're exclusive just for the transactions contract to close. Um, I'm actually bringing on a team leader. Well, someone's getting promoted to team leader um, next month. And so I'm stepping out of that role and I have agency on the team and we have a full-time marketing person as well. So they do all of the marketing. We have our own office. Um, is the marketing person uh, physical or virtual? Yeah, she's physical. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we have our full office and then I have a personal content creator, um, but, you know, who is also a agent on the team now. Um, but yeah, and then, but we've also taken a, a huge focus to the, you know, modern team, I guess you could say. And so there were some agents on the team that were, were here on the team for a while that are no longer agents on the team and are building more of the modern team network. And I chose to shrink down the team significantly because, I mean, at one point it was like 14 agents and wow. 14 agents, um, all this staff. And that was a lot. And I realized I didn't really want that. And I was okay with that. Um, but we still had business. And so really shrunk that down um, to where I have my personal people around me and we're really growing the revenue share network team and helping them out a lot to build the way that they want to build. Yeah, that, that's an opportunity for people to build their own business and their own brand, but still be connected with with you and everybody in, in the uh, partnership. Yep. Yep. Excellent. All right. So here's something that I like to end with. Um, let's imagine you had to start over, completely start over. You didn't have the YouTube thing. You had to start from ground zero. Uh, you had to move to a different town like you did. Uh, what would be different today or, or what would you suggest if you had like a nephew or niece that, that was like, hey, I want to get into real estate. I'm in the middle of Timbuktu. And uh, what do I do from day one to, to build it up? Yeah, I mean, I think that there's huge opportunity in the social spaces. So content wise, like and even I mean, an even bigger opportunity today because most people are consuming content more versus getting it out and about because, you know, people are indoors or working from home or virtual brokerages or, you know, whatever the case is. And so I would say build a brand around you, like seriously, hundred percent build a brand and learn how to sell. Okay. Um, you know, that's why I'm so confident that I can, not only build any type of, I mean, not only build a real estate business in a random place, but also build any type of business because I learned how to sell. And when I say learn how to sell, I'm, I'm, I'm talking deeper than just like, oh, here's how you show a house. I'm talking, right. learn the psychology of sales, learn how to be a closer, learn how to sell through your language, learn how to sell through the internet, through webinars, through whatever like learn how to sell. Okay. You will never be broke. And then secondly, build a brand around yourself. Okay. That's, that's one thing that can help you out because no matter what brokerage you go to, no matter what city or town you end up switching to, if you have a brand around you, that brand will be with you for whatever you do, whatever new business you start, you know, and it's it'll it'll help you out getting started and getting moving a lot quicker because you've built an authority um around your brand you know so for sure like don't miss out on that like even nowadays buyers and sellers i mean sellers especially are 
asking people, you know, how active are you on social media? What does your following look like? You know, um, and then you have buyers, right? People who are re um, relocating, a ton of them are finding their agents through their brands on social media, right? You know, um, so it's, it's something that you want to have. They take time to build which is why I say start soon, start early, like right when you get in, um, because it's going to take time. But those are two things, learn how to sell and build your brand. And what are some resources that people can look into, whether that, that be books or, or anything else, channels, networks, uh, to learn how to sell and build a brand? Do you have anything yeah. that comes to mind that people can kind of check out? Yeah, yeah. I mean, of course, there's, there, there's tons of resources out there. Um, Anything that I mean, you I, found helpful when you were learning and, and developing in your path? Let me tell you something about me, because maybe this will help <laughs> you. <laughs> maybe this will help you understand how my mind works, right? So let's just say, for instance, I'm reading a book or even watching a video on YouTube around right. like how to sell. And then next thing you know, like as I'm watching that, someone mentions let's take the term NLP. Someone mentions NLP. Then I'm like, what is NLP? So now I start going down this rabbit hole of researching NLP. And then <laughs> as I'm watching that, someone starts talking about subconscious and conscious brain. Then I go down a rabbit hole learning about that. So I've consumed so much from books. I get stuff from movies like freaking The Matrix. <laughs> like I can apply that to sales, you know, um, courses on Udemy, um, seminars, of, of, of course, like all of that. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a big person that literally goes down rabbit holes and I've consumed so much. So I have like a brain full of just strategies and techniques. I can't even point back to where I might've heard it or learned that from but I become obsessed with things right. in the sense of, I want to know everything about it. And so with any type of research, I don't, I don't even encourage people to, to be like that one and done person because one person or one book or one course is not going to teach you everything. Yeah, one, There's always going to be something to learn. Right, right? right. And so you have to be obsessed with the learning aspect of it to really get that full knowledge around it. And then you have to put it into practice. Like, don't just consume the information and not use it, right? Like, I learned a freaking language for all these years of high school and half of college, but because I never used it, I forgot it, you know? And it's hard. So as you're consuming the knowledge from whatever, and, and I believe everybody has something to offer, yes. right? Everybody has something to offer. Um, I believe as long as someone is 15 minutes ahead of you, they could teach you something that you don't know right? So everyone has something to offer. Don't discount anybody. Don't, don't push anybody to the side because they're not the biggest person in the space. Right. Like you never know what you could hear that will send you down a rabbit hole to acquire even more knowledge. So that's how I take it. Sorry, I don't have a book. There's tons of them out there. Um, sell or be sold. Start there. <laughs> like hey, by Grant Cardone, you know? Yeah, um, absolutely. But yeah, that's there's- great. It's, it's an obsessive personality that I find a common trait amongst uh, entrepreneurs, especially. So I, I completely relate to that and get it. Um, the one thing I'll add to that, which you hinted at, is don't be afraid to talk to people and network with people because there are people that are, you know, ahead of you. And maybe it's not the best idea, you know, in whatever space that you're in, obviously we're in real estate, but don't go after if you're just getting started and you're doing one to 10 deals a year, don't be like, hey, 200 deal, man, how do I do that? Maybe go to the 50 deal person and be like, how do I do that? And, and learn you know, the next step and the next evolution and the next phase. And, and don't be afraid to approach people. A lot of the time, people are fairly open and honest. If you get outside of your particular area, especially, um, I've found like I, I built a huge network just by traveling and going to different uh, seminars and coaching courses and being involved now in EXP, that kind of culture is all about sharing, right? So get involved, whatever company you're with, whatever, wherever you're at, I'd say get involved with people that um, reciprocate and definitely abide to that type of um, culture and foundation of sharing, right? Yep, for sure. Excellent. Awesome. Well, Chasten, thank you so much. I really appreciate you doing this today, man. I think it brought a lot of value to people and I uh, appreciate you letting us inside your, the growth and evolution of your business. Thank you. Thank you all for having me.
All right, guys, don't remember, or don't remember, remember, don't forget to subscribe, <laughs> like, and share, and we'll see you guys on the next show. Take it easy.